What's this? Ache. Whoa. I can't remember who anybody is. Tori Scream Pierce, my right ear. Okay, the audio might be a bit too loud, but I don't care. Uh, Tori Scream Pierce, right f from my right ear, out of my left. What are you doing? Why are you here? I was here before you were. But there's no way. My mouth was open in shock as I looked at the hat. What? I cannot remember what's going on. Oh, a hat, yes. What? Well, I guess it's no good sending a duck to scout a place out. Even if he was completely... Uh, to completely grasp what his responsibility was, there was no way he could convey the message. Dory seemed ashamed and looked away. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I surprised you. You were sneaking around, so I wondered what you were doing. I didn't mean to spoil a personal enjoyment. You really are mean. We... I went back to the kitchen to get things ready for dinner. Tori's face seemed to say now it only tastes half as good. She sulkily ate the ice cream. Why are you taking time off school? I caught a cold. <laughs> You're blatantly lying. Would someone who has caught a cold be eating ice cream? I'm the dawn mother, you know. I have to make sure the boarding students have the right kind of lifestyle. I don't remember accepting you as the dawn mother. Anyway, isn't it strange for a boy to be a dawn mother? Swoosh. She went to the trouble of turning around so that she could point at me. If you want to call me the dawn father, then that's fine by me. <laughs> Tori turned back around and went turned back around and uh, went back to enjoying her ice cream. If you weren't at school, then where were you? I softened my tongue a little as I asked her. Had nothing to do with you. Did you go back to the windmill hill? <laughs> She's ignoring me and eating her ice cream. It has got something to do with me. I won't accept you as the dawn mother. I don't mean that. Yesterday, if I hadn't been passing by, where would you be right now? Uh, if you're not careful in a place like that, then maybe nobody would have come. If you can't move your wheelchair, that uh, what would you have done by yourself? Uh, that's... Do you still think it's got nothing to do with me? I'm not accusing her of anything. That's why I tried to speak as gently as possible, as to not sound too harsh. However, I showed her how serious I was. Look, I said thank you, didn't I? For me to thank anyone is extremely rare, you know. It's true. It's as rare as a giant salamander. You shouldn't be... You should be the one thanking me. Are you proud of that? If you think that people would be happy because it's so rare, you're severely mistaken. Mistaken. Hmm. Tori seemed... Daunted by this sound argument, and put uh, put down the spoon and started thinking seriously. But because I'm like this, I can't do anything. You want some ice cream? It's really expensive. No, I don't. Sounds a little mean, so Tori became tearful all of a sudden. Her cheeks were quivering as she desperately tried to hold back tears. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I was joking. Don't make that face. It's nothing. I'm fine. That's right, you see, you're fine. Quack, quack. Hat quacked as though he was trying to cheer Tori up. I wouldn't tell you to say thank you, would I? It's just that if you go if you go out without telling anyone where you're going, it's kind of dangerous, you know? She wrapped the corner of her eye a little with her finger. I understand, but I don't want to understand. Don't I have to understand? Somehow that's what the look on her face said. She put the spoon down and went to leave the dining hall. Where are you going? I'm going to wash my face. It's all sticky around my mouth from where I've been eating ice cream. <laughs> she closed the notebook and put it on her lap. Then a piece of paper fell from the notebook. She dropped something. Tori looked as though she hadn't heard and left the dining hall. Hat went after her. As the sound of the wheelchair grew farther away, I let out a big sigh. <sighs> Maybe I said too much. It's just that I really was worried about it. I don't know anything about what's going on with Tori, so perhaps I was unnecessarily interfering. Wait. Flashback. Speaking of which, she was wearing her uniform. Or she was wearing her own clothes yesterday when she went to Windmill Hill. Do you think she was actually planning on going to school? That's possible, isn't it? God, this game looks beautiful. Um. As I thought of that, I felt my mood lighten a little. I picked up a piece of paper she dropped. Huh? Come on, I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, it's for withdrawal from school. Dun, dun, dun. Um. 
Yeah, there should be music here, that's good. Hey, cheer up, eh? Hey, cheer up, eh? I was depressed while I was here, cleaning up after dinner, and Kaneko came to comfort me. Why... Why did everyone leave so much on eating? It was really tasty, though. For tonight's dinner, Kaneko was the only one who ate all of our food. Without exception, everyone else left some uneaten. Tomorrow I'll make even more tasty food. So tasty that no one will leave anything uneaten. I felt renewed determination, and then the duck came waddling into the dining hall. Hello, Senior Hat. Quack. I see. You're hungry. Oh, do you have something going to eat? Um, there's some vegetables left over. I'll do. I need to think of a book. I haven't played this game in actual months. Um, Kanako took the leftover vegetables and fed them to the hat. To the hat. To hat. Is this duck her pet? Are you allowed to have pets here? Nope, he's no one's pet. Quack. He's been living here since before I came here. It's not clear who brought him here or when. That's why I call him Senor Hat. So the owner must have been keeping him. No, that's not it either. She said that Hat just appeared one day. That's why rather than being a pet, he's more like a housemate. Tori also called him a housemate. Quack quack. It's a mystery. Uh, once she had finished feeding Hat, can I go got out of her seat? Okay, I think I'll go take a bath. I'll go walking around in your underwear again, okay? Huh? Why not? Come on, it's summer. No. It's possible. And Echo gave me a quick insult as she left the dining hall. Why does everyone have to insult me just before they leave? I feel a little hurt as I clean the dishes. Big. <laughs> this time it was Katori poking the head in the dining hall. It was almost as if she was waiting for Kanako to leave before she came in. She doesn't seem to get along well with her. Or maybe she really was waiting for her to leave. I thought she might have to come to she might have to come to have dinner, but she appeared to be looking for something. She's looking under the table. Hat Hat, you're in the way. Quack quack. She went around the table once and then came past the counter in front of me. Hey, have have you seen a piece of paper? No, I haven't. What kind of paper? Paper is paper. Are you sure you haven't seen it? Positive. Uh, Dory groaned while staring at my face as if she were trying to see if I was telling the truth. With a straight face, I wiped the dishes with a towel. Huh. With no way to check, she went and look elsewhere. I put your dinner in the fridge, heat it up in the microwave, and eat it later, okay? Couldn't help lying to her. The thing she was looking for was the withdrawal notice that I picked up. We were worried that if it carries on like this, she'll stop coming all together. It looks like she's not really enjoying school. Aga has words crossed my mind. It looks like Katori's really planning to drop out of school. What am I doing? Why didn't I give the withdrawal notice back to her? There I stood, not even really understanding those feelings myself. Time passes, I think. Yes. Extend the little wings which fly in the sky highly. Okay then. God, there's a lot of static being picked up by this mic. Holy crap, this mic is way more sensitive on this recording thing. Uh. Good morning. Early in the morning, the doorbell chimed, so I went to open it, and there I saw Agatha. What are you doing here? Oh, you really are the dumb mother. Oh god, I scrolled. She remarked as she saw me wearing an apron. This place, it's the witch's mansion, isn't it? It is student dormitory for our school, huh? I got her focus the word student dormitory as if questioning their suitability as she gazed at the magnificent entrance. I was surprised too, to think that would become the caretaker of the place that we used to sneak in when we were kids. It's nice. I uh, might have to like it here too. I might like to like here too. Okay. If I were living here with you and I, it would definitely be fun. Why'd you come here then? I asked while guessing that perhaps she'd come to invite me to a walk to school with her. She is, after all, my number one best friend. Uh, oh yeah. I can ask Katari to come to school with me. I was wrong. Miss Alloway? Who's... Who Miss Alloway? No, it's not. 
While blushing due to the misunderstanding, I look back towards Katori's room. Looks like she hasn't woken up. Even if she gets up now and takes her time eating breakfast, she can still make it with time to spare. I see. Alright, I'll wait here. Thanks for the food. There's still some left. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, I can't eat this much so early in the morning. You're joking, right? I only gave you a little bit. Even people in sports clubs don't eat a huge bowl of Neapolitan pasta in the morning. Uh, yeah, I guess. Can I go eat the whole thing again this morning, though? How's it taste? It was tasty. Really? Yeah. Really, but uh, there was a lot of it, so I got tired of eating halfway through. Did, did the door slam really pick up on my mic? Oh god. Um. Oh god. Uh, with good food, it tastes no. With good food, it tastes good. No matter. Uh, is the argument being picked up? I hope not. Um. Yeah, that was picked up. Sorry about that. With good food, it tastes good. No matter how much you eat. You've always had an unrefined palate, haven't you? Unrefined palate? The shock hit me like a bolt of lightning. I hung my head in dismay. Why are you so why are you so shocked? Why are you so shocked? The truth is Agahad revealed the reason why since yesterday the boarders hadn't been eating my proper my cooking properly. Thought I'd ask her opinion, which is why I made Agatha some food. I got her some food and got her to eat it. It was made from leftover ingredients anyway. Eating things like pork fried with ginger or Neapolitan pasta in the morning? It's unlikely that girls would ever accept that kind of food. What about something more refreshing? If you're gonna make pasta, why not try tomato sauce or a Japanese style? Cooking for girls is so difficult. Boy or girl, we're all human. Tasty is tasty. That's what I believed. Just as I was seriously troubled by this, I heard the squeaking of turning wheels coming from down the hallway. First Hat the Duck came into the dining hall, then Katori came in, came in after him. It's the opposite to usual. Why do I have to... <sighs> Tori rubbed her slippy eyes and started preparing Hat's food. It somehow looked as if the hungry hat had woken her up. There, eat your fill and get nice and fat. Sooner or later I'm gonna eat you. Quack! Not understanding a word, Hat quacks happily as if uh, Tori speaks to him and eats his food. It's a duck, how cute. Huh? Tori notices Agatha is here and instantly opens her eyes. Uh, this is a pet duck, ain't it? I've seen one in TV commercial. Is it yours, Tori? He just decided to live in my room, that's all. Why are you here? Katori, you've been out of school for too long. I came to see how you are. You feel any better now? Teacher or someone asked you to do this, didn't they? No, they didn't actually. Hey, shall we go to school together? Who'd want to go with you? Wow. Katori gave her hmph and made another one of those straight faces she's so good at. But if you take too much time off, she'll get behind in lessons. I don't think it has anything to do with you. Well, that's true. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who said I was taking a day off today? Uh, don't get the wrong idea. The reason I'm going isn't just because you asked me to. Okay, then. All right, I'll wait for you. I never said I was going with you. I'll go by myself. Dory sat with a straight face and then turned her wheelchair around. He's... Uh, just as she was about to leave, she stopped the wheelchair and turned around. You two, do you know each other? Huh? Yeah, we're childhood friends. Huh. What a pair of idiots. Huh. It looks like she has even more of a bad attitude this morning. Well, she did say she was going to school. Which I wouldn't believe. But, you know. Tidying up the practice things and left the dormitory with Agatha. On her way to school, somehow our conversation turned to the Tory. Is there a reason why Katori stopped coming to school? Yeah, I guess there is. Katori has a walking disability, right? When we joined the same class in the second grade, it seemed like she wasn't really into it. Sometimes I would have to speak to her. So it's 
that's so like I had to worry about that sort of thing. If there are any people who don't really fit into the group or are left out, she won't just ignore them. In the past, that's why, and uh, that's why I started to play with Mabo. Uh, so it couldn't have been the same reason. For Katari to be like that, to put it bluntly, seems like she don't really want to fit in. Yeah, I can imagine that somehow. When the other girls in the class saw me with Katari like that, they get angry. And that's when, that's when they started to object to Katari. It's become a big battle with girls in the class versus Katari. Nagaha reminded herself of what happened back then. She really slouched forward. Agatha is cheerful and has many friends. Tori, who didn't respond to Agatha's concerns about her, might have been seen as one well in the wrong by those by around her. Since when did she stop coming to school? That's right. And you know, back then, Katori was amazing. She faced up to all the girls in the class, and she didn't back down at all. Agatha waving her arms around like some, uh, someone from a kung fu movie and passionately tells the story. I decided not to ask her what kind of heroic deeds took place or any specific details. Well, I didn't expect that. Even just by saying something in a slightly harsh way, she gets all tearful. Why did Katari come to our school? Huh? You no, know, she don't really enjoy the lessons and don't try to make any friends. The only reason I could think of is that it might be because she has a full disabled accent. In fact, that could be the main reason. Sheesh, I gotta do something about this. Cutting with Agatha from the side as she puts her hands up behind her head and starts flinging things over. I remember the withdrawal notice I picked up last night. On the spur of the moment, I decided not to give it back and acted like I knew something about it. Knew nothing about it. Is she really planning to drop out? Huh. It somehow felt like I had picked up, fixed some heavy piece of lost property. Two of us both made troubled faces as we walked. Murmur, murmur. Quite strange commotion surrounded us. Huh? Most of the other students around us on their way to school were looking in the same direction. Over there was a tall, slender, beautiful girl walking along. Oh, it's her. It was the girl I met in the garage. Everyone was looking at her with curiosity, but it seemed that she hadn't noticed that other people were looking at her. I was looking at her in the same way as everyone else, but Agatha took the way I was looking in the wrong way. Ho ho, as I thought, you have high standards. That girl is really famous for our school. She's the super repeat student, senior Amene Mochizuki. Super repeat student? Yeah, she repeat. I think I repeated something wrong. Um, yeah, she repeated the same school year several times. Is she that stupid? She doesn't look though. If I had to say one way or the other, I'd say she's a genius. It's beyond the level of her having the best scores or anything like that, rather. The teachers have nothing more to teach her. In fact, they sometimes go to learn from her, it seems. Cleverer than the teachers? Does our school really deal in such specialized fields? Despite that, she don't graduate and stays in school. She plans, uh, a way to drop credits and intentionally repeats the year. I, I'm not scrolling, Mouse. Please don't think of that. Originally, she was repeating the year for more uh, times than the school rules allow, so that's why she's the super repeat student. But it's strange to see her on her way to school in the morning. I don't know if she's a genius or not, but she definitely seems like a weird person. Uh, Jeez. Then, abruptly, Silver Repeats student senior Akime Mochizuki stopped walking and looked at the sky. Everyone else mimicked her and looked up too, a jet plane flying through the blue sky, pulling its paper trail along behind it. Wow. Everyone soon realized it was a plane and quickly lost interest and started walking again. However, Amene Mochizuki kept on standing there, looking up at the plane flying high in the sky. When people came from behind and avoided her like uh, she was in their way, she didn't pay any attention to them either. Let's go. Sure. Um, 
about 20 minutes. I can go for a few more minutes. Katori just arrived. Katori arrived just as our morning home and class finished. Sorry I'm late. Katori, do you feel better now? Yes, fine, Katori. I see. I was worried about you. Katori went past the homeroom teacher who seemed bewildered that she had uh, come back to school all of a sudden and then, still in a wheelchair, arrived at the desk. The desk uh, right at the front was the only one that didn't have a chair. Everyone looked on, puzzled. I'm not an animal in the zoo. Now that Katori was in school, she started her cool Lua routine again. She concentrated during the lessons and asked the teacher's questions, usually the one asked. Seemed like her grades and regular subjects were top class. During recess, she sat at her desk reading the book or going off somewhere. Didn't try to talk to anyone, and even if Agatha had tried to speak to her, she acted like she hadn't noticed. The other girls in the class looked like they were worried about how they should treat her and watched her from a distance. During gym class, the way she looked on board left an impression on me. She always looked like she was all alone and didn't seem to be enjoying herself very much. Um, I'm remembering. Um, hey, Katori. Yeah. At lunchtime, I found Katori carrying a bag about to leave the classroom and I chased her down the hallway. It's lunchtime, you know, what are you doing? Whoosh! Suddenly, Katori dashed away at an unbelievable speed. But, hey! In the heat of the moment, I tried to chase her, but I thought I would bump into passing students, and I was too slow to start moving. In the meantime, Katori had already gotten inside the elevator. According to school rules, most students are not allowed to use the elevator. It was supposed to be used by workers or teachers carrying their clothes or disabled students like Katori. Even so, I chased her after her only for the doors to close mercilessly in front of me. Uh, though the cla through the class, the one with the self-proclaimed cool allure uh, struck her tongue out and uh, headed to the floor below as I stood and watched. I'm not getting away! Um, <sighs> I ran and made it to the school gates. She was holding her bag. It seemed like she was trying to leave early, so I went to cut her off. However, I can't deny the possibility that her lunch was in the bag. Maybe I got the wrong idea. If that's not it, then what could be the problem? I watched over the school gates like some guardian statue. BAM! I was crashed into by something in the back, in other words, from outside the school gates. Ah! Uh, whoa! Uh, what is that? I got up and felt like I was crawling under from an avalanche. Then I saw a big cardboard box and a girl had fallen over. Are you okay? Uh, I'm okay. I'm sorry, but I couldn't see ahead of me because this box I was carrying. Oh. Uh, I looked at her as I got up and without thinking I thought I was going to say the super repeat student, but I held my tongue. How are you? You're not hurt, are you? I'm alright. I see, that's good. I don't know why I keep giving them like a southern accent. Uh, as she says that, the super repeating super senior holds onto the uh, cardboard box. God, it's getting hot. Dog. I should get a drink. <laughs> oh. My stomach! She went and lifted up, but then uh, senior Akame Mochizuki slumped down exhausted. Due to an empty stomach, my short-term performance has been significantly reduced. I'll help you carry it. No, oh, it's so heavy. The big cardboard box is incredibly heavy. It's fine, I can carry it by myself. Ah, oh, come on, it's no big deal. I said this, I wanted to pick it up anyway. Phew, thanks. Um, is it okay here? I don't know what's in it, but we put the heavy cardboard box down the floor. Sorry about that, thanks for helping. It's alright. Uh, if you're hungry, anyway, see me if you're hungry. Uh, I can obviously see the translation. Um, she was staring towards the inside of the garage. Uh, see me? Oh god. I find myself copying her and looking in the same direction. Inside? <laughs> was Katori. What's she doing here? She is by the big thing placed in the center of the garage and is standing is trying to fuck I'm an idiot. Yeah, I can't read. And is trying to uh, lift up the sheet to see what's underneath. Are you interested in that? Tori is surprised when I come here to speak to her. 
I'm like, there's no K in there. I'm fucking, I can't read. Dory is surprised when I'm in there, speaks to her. Dory seems intimidated and nods. Uh, God damn uh, I'm in a vigorously pulls back the sheet. Inside is a white streamlined aircraft. Huh? Victoria looked at it dazed. I say, wow, as I let out a small surprise sound. Uh, Could this be a, a glider? Oh my god, cars. Yes, it is. Again, it was. Um, Mine nodded and Katori curious, cautiously moved her head closer to the aircraft. Even in the dimly lit garage, the glider's white body had a uh, glossy shine to it, and faintly reflected it on Katori's face. I moved it, uh, I moved towards it, taking a closer look. This is the one we saw from the windmill, huh? Yeah, it could be. The smooth surface looks like it was made from plastic, however, it's hard to the touch. The wing had been removed and for now it's just the body. So, this is what the cockpit's like. This is amazing. Yeah. Huh? We started talking to each other uh, as some, at some point, but then finally realized who it was we were talking to. Hey, you, why were you running away just now? She calmly ignores my question and then hurries tries to escape, but I go ahead and block her. Only get away. Yeah. Why did you come here? You're not gonna eat lunch, are you? Huh. There there was some mean guy got in the school gate, so I came hiding here. She so she really was trying to leave early. Do you know? Um, and I was listening carefully to our conversation. And I think I'm going to end it here, so I'll see you guys next one.